The rainforests of Thailand are some of the oldest on Earth. For over 100 million years, they've been helping the planet to breathe, taking in carbon, putting out oxygen, in an endless cycle of life so complex that we've only just begun to understand it. But science aside, these rainforests are quite simply breathtaking. The sheer number of plant and animal species found in Thailand's rainforests are incredible and all fit together in an intricate web. Rainforests are divided into four layers, each one home to different creatures and plants. The first layer is above the treetops and is known as the emergent layer or overstory. Below that, the forest canopy. The next layer down is the understory. And right at the bottom, there's the forest floor. The emergent layer is often the playground of the gibbons, who are surely some of the world's best trapeze artists. Gibbons are apes, not monkeys. And this white-handed gibbon is one of nine species in Asia. They're masters of arboreal locomotion. Their wrists are made up of a ball and socket joint, giving them far more flexibility than a common wrist joint would. Their existence is restricted to the top of the forest. Every aspect of their lives is played out amongst the leaves. Moving below the tops of these giant trees, the canopy takes over. It's the forest ceiling, and more than three quarters of all life in the forest is found in this layer. The canopy itself is a power plant for the entire forest. Billions of leaves fit closely together and act as cells in a giant solar panel. This provides the forest with energy by converting sunlight to starch through photosynthesis. The rate of photosynthesis in canopy trees is so high that the fruit, seed and flower production is abundant, which means that the apes, monkeys and birds have plenty to eat. Among the top branches of a bamboo thicket, a group of dusky langurs forages. Nibbling only the very tips of leaves, they have a special digestive system that allows them to break down plant material. Interestingly, the leaves in this layer are often elongated as they have to stretch out to receive light. A mother nurses her baby from a lookout point on a branch. Juveniles darken with age to match their parents. Moving down to the next layer of the forest, just beneath the canopy, is the dark understory. Some of the world's most exquisite flowers can flourish here. Orchids. Sunlight is limited in the understory, which makes it the perfect place for them to grow. With their heady fragrances, the orchids attract a lot of would-be pollinators. The understory and shrubbery levels of a rainforest are also where one is likely to find a variety of reptiles.
the constant heat of the tropics is perfect for these cold-blooded animals to hunt. This whip snake strategy is to disguise itself as a vine blowing in the breeze. Clever coloring is essential for survival in the forest, especially if you are only a mildly venomous snake. Lying hidden beneath the previous three layers, the forest floor is a damp, secret place of shadows and shifting forms. The floor is dominated by leaf litter, and this debris from the levels above creates a very surprising ecosystem. And at certain times of the year, it's bursting with some very beautiful inhabitants. Jutting out from the rotting plant matter are some bizarre looking fungi. Many people think that fungi are in fact plants, but the surprising truth is that they are more closely related to animals. The link between forests and fungi has only recently been acknowledged by scientists, and it's now thought that forests would not exist at all if it wasn't for their highly complex mutualistic relationship. The forest floor is the recycling factory for the whole system. Everything here is broken down by a myriad of insects, other creatures and, of course, the elements. Everything that has lived in this ecosystem eventually finds itself committed back to the forest floor. The bottom layers of the forest have also been colonized by primates. Long-tailed macaques tend to stay below the higher canopy, avoiding the gibbons, and stay in family groups where they don't have to call to locate each other. They're highly adaptable, and their days are spent traveling, socializing, feeding, and resting beneath the canopy. They eat fruit from the trees, but often come down to ground level to forage for insects and crabs. With the constant hedging of moisture around, rain is frequent and streams meander through the forest. Like everything else in the forest, these bodies of water are teeming with life. At a river's edge, some Asian wild dogs are attracted by a rotting carcass. Also known as red dogs, they're highly endangered with fewer than 2,500 left in the wild. This sighting is very rare in these forests that guard their secrets closely. Nothing goes to waste here, and the remains of this sambar deer will keep the dogs fed for a while.
It's also not often that the forest's largest residents reveal themselves. This herd of Asian elephants obviously feels more secure under the cover of the trees, but they're drawn to something in this meadow and they tentatively test the air. Below an eroded embankment, a series of salt licks prove irresistible to the big herbivores. Their craving for the minerals that the lick offers is doing battle with their inherent shyness. A braver scouting party reaches the lick and begins to feed on the mud bank. Then something frightens them and they head back to the safety and sanctuary of the forest. Scientists are only beginning to understand just how important these natural rainforests are to our planet. Yet they're being destroyed at an alarming rate. Thailand has lost millions of hectares of forest cover over the last few decades alone. But more than that, it is incomprehensible to imagine a planet without these truly magnificent wild spaces. <laughs> 